Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we are going to do another top five, a uh, different environment today. I like this setup a little bit. And you guys, last time I did a video like this, indicated that you really liked it. So let's go ahead and just add a little bit more variety in here. And uh, we're just gonna do a video like this. We're gonna be looking at five reasons you should learn the terminal. Now, I'm a GUI guy. I talk about this a lot. I don't necessarily wanna dive in and, and uh, I don't think that a Linux user necessarily has to use the terminal. Uh, in this day and age. There's so many great advantages and so many of the new distros that are fixing things with GUI applications. Now, does it dumb down some of the user base? Mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But remember that most of us do not need to know how to do everything on our systems. We just need a computer that's going to work that we can get our things done on. And so it's this part of this big, big debate between, you know, what's real Linux? You know, I have Arch right here. I have Linux Mint over here. They're both good systems. I use Mint for production. Arch is more for testing. Um, obviously, the Arch system, I've been in the terminal a whole lot more than the Mint system, but I do actually go in there every now and again. So I'm going to identify what I consider the five reasons you should learn the terminal if not to use it a lot, at least to make yourself a little bit familiar with it. So number one, many functions in the terminal can be faster or even more bug free. One of the early issues with elementary, uh, one of the things that, that I talked about on elementary OS a while back that has been resolved, uh, also Solace had this issue, that uh, if you ran updates through the GUI, it breaks. Uh, come to think of it, I think Manjaro also does this. Running updates through the GUI can actually break the system more frequently. But if you run those same updates in the terminal, it happens faster and it seems to happen with fewer bugs. So that's definitely an, an issue. Also installing applications. If I already know what my applications are I want to install, I just go right in and do them through the terminal. I don't generally go into software centers anymore to hunt around for something. If I'm hunting for something, hmm, what application could do this? That is where I go as I go into a software center. But if I know, for example, today I needed to do to do a couple different things in a terminal and it's like, oh, what do I need? Oh, I think I need, need Image Magic. Make sure that's the most up-to-date version. Uh, PDF Shuffler is one I installed on my system today to do some PDF stuff. So, you know, sudo apt install PDF Shuffler. Way easier than booting up the, uh, booting up the software center, searching for it and installing it from there. So if you already know what you're trying to do, if you're wanting to update your systems, then doing these things through the terminal is actually a little bit faster. Now, of course, there's so many different types of Linux. One of the things that uh, Chris Titus talked about, about on his um, Clear Linux video uh, this last couple days ago was that they have an entirely new package manager. So there's another one we need to learn. You know, we know the Debian. Uh, we know now know we have the Arch. We have the Solus. <laughs> now we have the Clear Linux. Um, Fortunately, most of them are fairly similar, but nevertheless, uh, if you know how to use the terminal for updates, for installs, it is generally faster than using other methods. All right, number two, we have more applications, a lot more applications. A lot of terminal-based applications you may or may not have ever heard of. You know, you want to convert, you know, MP3 bit rates. There's a neat application called Lame, terminal-based application. It's used as a plugin in several different uh, applications as well. But you can go right on into the into the terminal, cause your conversions. You now, like I said, I was doing some image magic stuff today. Um, needed to use that one. If you like downloading the YouTube videos, uh, you can use YouTube DL to grab many YouTube videos all from a terminal uh, application. And there's so many more applications that are out there. So a lot more applications, you do have to learn how to use them, you have to learn the syntax, but that's actually not all that difficult. This brings us into our number three. With all of these terminal applications, one of the greatest things about terminal applications is you can batch process any of them with a very simple script which you can either just write and keep on your computer and call the script, or you can just boot up the script, copy it, and paste it into the terminal, whatever one works for you. Um, but because a terminal-based application is you know, a command line system, you generally can batch process these. This is why I use Lame, why I use um, uh, ImageMagic. So 
what I was doing today is we got another book published and so I was adding the the images for my store. So what I like to do is I'll have, I'll take my, my print PDF that goes out to the print distributors and I'll go in there and I'll extract certain pages to have as the template. So use PDF Shuffler, you can select those individual pages, pull out just those individual pages rather than have to, you know, pull them out separately. Otherwise you'd be loading it up in GIMP or if you're still on Windows or something, you might load it up in Photoshop one at a time and export the pages as an image. It takes a lot of time. But if you are using, uh, if you are using Image Magic, you can actually convert a PDF page directly into a JPEG. Now I did find that I need to do two steps, convert it into a JPEG and then change the image size, both of which are done in batch scripts. So I'll extract eight to 10 pages and then go ahead and say, well, convert all these to JPEGs and now take all these JPEGs and drop them directly into the exact image dimensions that I need. And with that, uh, doing that as our, as our final step, I can write a little script that will batch process those. I do the same thing with my audiobooks. Distribution through Audible and through all of the global distribution networks for doing audiobooks requires a 192 kbps audiobook, which is overkill for a mono file. So when I sell the audiobooks on a separate system, I'll drop the file size down to 32 kilobit per second. So they're not taking a lot of space. They still sound good. Well, I use a batch automation script through Lame to process those. So I convert them in one simple step to from uh, the 192 down to the 32 with one batch process script. Otherwise, I'd have to open them all up separately in a GUI application, export as. It would take me a good 20 minutes. One script done in less than one. So that is some of the power of some of these tools if you're doing image manipulation, if you're doing audio manipulation, if you're doing these types of things where batch automation can work, learning the terminal is great because you can simply write a little script to do the batch process all you want. All right, um, let's see, one, two, three, number four. Number four is it is easier to do remote application like remote management of your system. So if you had, for example, an operating system at somebody else's house that their computer in illiterate and you need to be able to manage it, you can use like a team viewer thing and take control of the full GUI. They're generally a little bit laggier. I know Google is coming out with a new service to do this through Chrome. That kind of frightens the bejeebers out of me that with a Google account, I could access somebody's computer. Well, that might be the hacker's dream. But if you simply enable SSH services, you can terminal root into somebody's system, you can run the upgrades in the background, you can take care of a lot of these types of things. This is of course the methodology that you use on an AWS server or a DigitalOcean server. I had to get in there into my uh, AWS server where my Calibora is run form, which allows me to use in my next cloud instance, my next cloud can replace entirely Google Docs. I can create documents, I can write them in the cloud, I can share them with other people, I can collaborate. All that stuff is run on an application called Code or Calibora Online Development Edition. That runs on a server and I just root access into that with an SSH and do any of my server management. And then of course this brings us to our fifth uh, reason. Uh, number five, if, especially if you're, if you're moving beyond the Linux Mint, if you're moving beyond Ubuntu uh, Elementary, the easy to use systems, and you're going into an Arch system, you're going into an OpenSUSE, whatever else, then almost all of the th solutions you're gonna find to fix anything that goes wrong are all gonna be terminal based. And if you already have the fundamentals, the basics of learning the terminal, you're going to understand what you're doing a whole lot more than if you, if you don't. Uh, so you get online, you look for various, various solutions, you will always find a good terminal-based route, whether you're running Linux Mint or run it, whether you're running Arch or Gentoo or something. They're all good and they all have their own applications that work very well. And with that being said, do I think everybody needs to learn the terminal? Probably not. There's probably a lot of you out there that can be very happy using Linux without ever going through the terminal. You want to stay in your Ubuntu families, your uh, Linux Mint, your other very easy to use GUI applications where you don't need to drop into that for basic system administration. But if you are wanting to go to the next level with your Linux, 
go ahead and start learning a little bit about the terminal. Learn how to use YouTube DL, learn how to use LAME or Image Magic to do some basic image manipulation. Uh, these are the types of things that, that you can easily do. So that being said, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this top five list. Let me know your reasons to learn the terminal in the comments down below.